Eric Darling here with Eric Darling Data, and uh, uh, re we recently uh, got sponsored by Beer Gut Magazine, oh, and thank you uh, for sending some beer so that I can uh, hopefully someday uh, be a centerfold in Beer Gut Magazine. Appreciate you, uh, your wonderful publication. Truly doing uh, work that the journalistic world is afraid to do. Uh, anyway, so today I want to talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, queries and memory and how you can use my novel store procedure, SP pressure detector, SP, un is there an underscore? No, there's no underscore, SP underscore pressure detector to, um, evaluate memory usage on your SQL server and how queries and different things might be fighting over it. Now, I have one query here that's designed to just fill up the buffer pool. Uh, it hits the post table, which is big and uh, cross joins the votes table because it's a demo and why not? I don't care. Um, and then I have uh, this query down here, which will generate a 16 gig memory grant. One six. And we're going to see how these things kind of play together. Now, if we look at uh, how big the post table is, we can see that it is 120 gigabytes. And that means it is larger then the amount of memory we have assigned to the server, which is uh, just about at the 90, well, max, mem max server memory is set to 90 gigs. The VM itself has 96 gigs. If we go look over, oh, not there. <laughs> if we go look over here, uh, we can see 96 gigs. That's 96 times 1,024. We do correct math in these, these videos, by God. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go look. Uh, what's going on in the server right now, which is absolutely nothing. There's nothing happening. The, the server is wildly, wildly bored. Uh, if we look at some of the details here, we can see that the buffer pool is up around 86 gigs, just about. Close enough for me to say 86. I mean, don't, if you want to argue, uh, I don't know. Go do it in the mirror. Mirror in the bathroom. Uh, we can see that currently there are about three gigs of memory assigned to other things within SQL Server. What are they? I don't know. Uh, maybe just a whole bunch of little things like this. I don't know. You'll have to, you'll have to just deal with that too. But what happens when we, uh, so we, we run, this one might as well just show you. If we run this store procedure and we come look over here. Uh, we're never going to really get up to that 90 gigs of max server memory. Like we're never gonna like the buffer pool is never actually gonna hit that number. It'll always stay just around the 86 gig mark. Sort of interestingly, if I turn lock pages and memory off, this thing will stay just around like 82, 83 gigs. So we do use a little bit more buffer pool when we have um, when we have lock pages and memory turned on. I don't know if that's like the biggest deal in the world, but you know, it's like at least in this situation where it's just like a few gigs difference. But uh, you know, it just maybe something helpful to know. And if we look at what happens to memory when we run the memory thief store procedure and then come look at SP pressure detector, uh, we're going to see immediately that this 16 point something gigs gets reserved and uh, memory used is going to slowly, or um, the buffer pool is going to slowly decrease down to about 76 gigs. We're also going to see the stolen server memory setting and that's going to slowly creep up as the as the query uses the memory that it's been granted, we can see that the memory has been granted uh, that 16 whatever gigs, and we can see that the memory that it's used so far is only about seven gigs. But as that number creeps up, now this number now we've used about 15 gigs. We're going to see uh, the stolen server memory setting or stolen server memory metric creep up. So stolen server memory is a snapshot of what has what is taking memory away from the buffer pool currently. All right. Uh, if we kill this query, murder it, uh, and it stopped, and we come look at SP pressure detector, we're going to see uh, this number disappear. It goes away immediately. Stolen server memory also goes back down to about 3 gigs, but used memory hasn't really recovered, right? We see that number is going to stay exactly the same because nothing is asking to get read back into the buffer pool and get things moving there, right? So if we keep running this, nothing really is going to happen. Cool. That's good to know. We've set up some sort of like things in isolation that matter. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's abuse this server a little bit. Close this. We don't need that open. Uh, and we're going to run uh, four copies of our memory thief store procedure, and we're going to run oops uh, one co uh, three copies of our buffer pool filling store procedure, and let's see what happens. 
All right, so we got our memory memory thieves, and we got our, our pool fillers. And if we come over here and run this, uh, this has jumped up to about 50 gigs. Uh, stolen server memory is about 12 gigs, but we're going to see that the buffer pools slowly decrease as these memory grants start getting used, right? As these numbers start creeping up, these used memory numbers start creeping up, what happens? Buffer pool starts shrinking down and down and down, and stolen server memory creeps up and up and up. Right? So you can see all that stuff happening there. And if we look at what's going on with the queries, well, uh, we can, we're going to see that uh, the queries that need to read a bunch of pages from disk into memory are, of course, going to be waiting on page IO latch, SH. Right? And be waiting a long, long time on that. Just reading pages from disk into memory. That's what we have to do because we don't have all the pages that we need in memory. And the SQL Server is a curmudgeon about that sort of thing. All right, so we come over here and look. We're also going to have one query waiting on resource semaphore. So one of our uh, queries that is asking for a memory grant is not getting it. It has requested uh, that 16 gig grant, but SQL Server can't give it out because it has reached the limit of how much it is willing to give out to, uh, to queries. Right? If we look uh, over here a little bit, we will see that this thing is sitting in a queue, unable to do anything. And if we look down here, we'll see that uh, we have granted out all that. And even though we have almost ex I the identical amount of memory that that thing has asked for available to give out, we're not going to give it out to that query. This is why we hit those resource semaphore weights. I've recorded a whole bunch of videos about that. But notice that what we end up with here is at some point the buffer pool is shrunk down to 40 gigs, and we have given out more memory to queries than we have kept in the buffer pool by about 9 gigs. Right, so that's, that's fun stuff right there. Right? That's really fun, interesting, messed up stuff. And if we keep running SP pressure detector, this situation isn't really going to change much. Uh, if we just keep running this, eventually we'll end up with more queries waiting on resource semaphore. Uh, we'll end up with a the buffer pool just getting abused and beat up and uh, like it's dropping down to a way lower number and uh, you know things just not being fun for SQL Server. But that's the new thing that SP Pressure Detector can show you. Uh, I just added that recently while working with a client, this top result set here. And as we kill off those queries, right, we stop them things from running, notice that we still don't have. We still have a very small buffer pool. <laughs> we still have not given anything back to the buffer pool, but we have reclaimed all the memory that we could give out to queries. So that's fun stuff there. So anyway, uh, I think you know I've I've said it quite a few times in quite a few ways, but um, you know make sure when you are sizing your SQL servers, when you are tuning your SQL servers, when you're trying to figure out. Uh, uh, why your SQL servers are uh, slow and crappy and everything is falling apart. You know, why doesn't SQL server scale? Well, probably because you didn't give it enough memory because you are uh, bad at guessing memory numbers. <laughs> Something. Uh, bad memory fortune teller. Uh, but remember, uh, you know, not only is uh, the amount of memory that you need a function of uh, how much data you have stored on the server, but it's also a function of how much memory your queries are asking for. If you want to figure out if SQL Server has enough memory and you want uh, using my store procedure, SP Pressure Detector is a great way to do that because it will help you determine if queries are waiting on memory, either the resource semaphore weights, uh, how much memory is generally taken away from the buffer pool. And uh, you know you can look at the weight stats for individual queries and figure out, oh, we spend a lot of time waiting on reading pages from disk. We spend a lot of time with queries waiting on uh, with the page I/O latch waits. Uh, we spend a lot of time with queries waiting on resource semaphore waits, waiting to get memory. So there's a couple of good things you can figure out uh, just with the hit of magical F5 button, and you can you too can learn all sorts of horrible things about why your SQL Server is slow and uh, everyone is angry at you, and um, you will never ever be a centerfold in Beer Gut Magazine. Anyway, it's Friday. Uh, I hope you are too, and uh, I don't know. I'm going to go enjoy my Beer Gut Magazine subscription, and uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll see you in another video, or maybe you'll just read me in another blog post, and or I don't know. Maybe, maybe, once I, maybe once I become a world-famous model, world-famous centerfold, I'll just quit all this SQL Server stuff and go, go live with the Glitterati.
Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Where is that stop button?